We are already halfway through the 2023 Downhill World Cup series, and I feel like there's already some clear bike setup trends working their way into the pits. So I'm gonna go through these in agonizing detail so that we can work out whether we should learn from those trends or avoid them altogether. Either way, give us a big old like and do subscribe if you're new to the channel. the biggest trend of this year and probably the last few years will probably come as no surprise to you that it is that mixed wheel sizing or that mullet setup as it's affectionately known. You've got the Santa Cruz V10, Scott Gambler, Specialized Demo, Nuke Proof Descent all offering that mixed wheel sizing now. So even the legend Sam Hill has come back out of retirement to race on a mullet setup for the first time ever. But he is five foot nine and he's been racing many years on two smaller wheels. So I suppose that isn't much of a surprise. Uh, Loic Bruni also been racing mullet for a couple of years and won the Downhill World Championships on it in 2022. But again, he is five foot 11 and I guess it supports his aggressive style as well. However, Angel Suarez at six foot one is enjoying mixed wheels on his CNC machine prototype Uno right now. And a lofty Jordan Williams took the win in Lenzerheide aboard mixed wheels as well. So it's not just reserved for the shorter riders. In fact, Troy Brosnan took a 29er to Lenzerheide in 2021, thinking that it would be faster in all the bike park stuff and soon found out the times were won and lost in the techie woods and actually a mullet would have been faster. So I personally love a mixed wheel setup and I've stolen this bike off of Neil and he clearly loves that mixed wheel setup too. Uh, but there's still some wild cards out there riding a full 29er on the World Cup circuit like Ronan Dune for example. And you know what, when you come to a bike park like this where everything is fast and flowy, that 29er does just give you a bit more momentum and you get a little bit of free speed. So I don't think us riders should be ruling it out just yet. What is it with downhillers? They're riding the roughest of tracks at the fastest of speeds, and they're sometimes breaking multiple rims in a season, maybe even sometimes in a one race. They've got dedicated mechanics that do all of their maintenance for them, and yet they're still choosing not to run tire inserts for a lot of them. But why is that? So this comes down to feel, and apparently a lot of downhill riders on the World Cup scene prefer a linear compression feel to their tires. Now, maybe this is just to match up with the rear suspension, which is often a coil, which is quite linear in itself. And we know that World Cup racers like to have a consistent feel. Uh, we know a lot of riders who maybe even sponsored by say Continental who have front and rear tires and there are riders out there running front tires on the rear simply because they don't like a different progression from the center tread to the outside tread. So consistency plays a big part in racing. Also, we've seen that the Santa Cruz team have been playing with that new V10, that version eight prototype, and they have created the linkage to be slightly more linear in the rear. And the reports go that a linear feel gives more traction and grip. So I can only assume that perhaps that plays a part for tires too. And grip definitely is something you want on the World Cup circuit. So who is running them? Well, Angel Suarez is running some Tannis tubeless armor. Uh, Jess Blewett is running a rim packed in just one in the back wheel. Uh, also, Camille Belanche favors just one in the back. Also, there's a handful of Kushkor athletes breaking through into the World Cup. We've got Sam Blenkinsop on them. We've got Jordan Williams. We've got the entire uh, pink bike racing team, including Ben Cathro, who reportedly likes the inserts because 
it gives him heavier wheels and he quite likes the feel of that. But Cush Core's marketing is all geared towards giving a progressive tire feel uh, rather than a linear one. And so I think feel is definitely a deciding factor when it comes to the World Cup, not so much uh, impact protection, which is what you or I might decide to choose a insert for. So it may be a big trend on the World Cup circuit to not have a tire insert, but you've got to think if you don't get free wheels and you don't have a free crash replacement policy on your wheels, then is it worth it to have a linear tire fill or a little bit more traction? Uh, personally, I would favor peace of mind over that. The high pivot suspension design has, well, it's been around for a long time now, but we have seen it fall into fashion in the last five years. And I think that's largely due to the success of the Common Sour racing team. And it seemed that that DH Supreme uh, with its high pivot was a winning formula and almost every brand started to come out with a high pivot. Loris Vergier is still loving that Trek session. Uh, Sam Blenkinsop has actually left Norco after eight years and started working more hands-on with Crestline to design a high pivot with an adjustable idler. Uh, a small point that that adjustable idler does change the characteristics of the bike and it is important to say that no high pivot is the same. But although the high pivot does offer that characterful rearward axle path to move out of the way of big hits like this, it's still not the design of choice for many brands. You've got the Canyon Sender, the Nuke Proof Descent, the Scott Gambler, the Santa Cruz V10. They're all still conventional suspensions that aren't high pivot. And also we've got to look at Pivot Factory Racing, mucking around with the prototype and Santa Cruz Syndicate also mucking around with a prototype. And both of those camps have said that they tried the high pivot and they didn't actually like it. They didn't think it was quicker. So they've reverted back to something else. So is high pivot a winning formula? Maybe, but I don't think it's the be all and end all. And I think it's falling out of fashion a little bit. Should we follow this trend? Maybe, but I don't think we should discredit High Pivot and I don't think we should discredit any others just because the Common Sal team have had a great run on them. Uh, at the end of the day, it is horses for courses and no one suspension design is gonna fit every rider. So it seems every man and his dog has wires and cables coming out of their suspension these days. And I'm not even referring to all of that secret stuff that's happening in the specialized tent at the moment with O-Lings and uh, what appears to be like an Xbox controller on Loic Bruni's handlebars. Um, what I'm talking about is the telemetry kits, which we've seen more and more downhill riders using. Now, often they'll have a race bike, but they'll also have a practice bike hooked up with telemetry. And you'll know they're running this because they have various strut looking um, equipment on their fork and on their rear suspension. And all of these kits are doing is collecting quantifiable data about how their suspension moves or maybe how their brakes are performing in order to properly quantify whether settings on their suspension is making a positive difference and whether they're going quicker or not, uh, rather than relying on feel, which can sometimes be inaccurate. Now recently, we've actually seen more affordable home telemetry kits come to the market. So you and I could effectively purchase that kit ourselves and start to work out whether suspension is doing its job for us in our local rides and races. Uh, whether you would go through the effort of playing with different suspension settings and trying that again and again on a track and then taking it off for your race run uh, is probably another question. So even if you were inclined to go through the effort of using one, you really need to know how to interpret this data. You've got to have a really good
good understanding of compression, rebound, air settings, even suspension kinematics in order to understand how all of that data affects all of those settings and the bike's overall performance. But even with all of that data, I think there's no getting over just general rider preference and rider psychology. Different riders on the World Cup level certainly run the suspension very differently. Rachel Atherton runs a lot of air pressure for her weight. She runs her suspension very firm with a handful of spaces in there. She prefers a progressive feel and she likes her front end to stay up to give her confidence. Whereas someone like Angel Suarez, who runs 35% sag and pretty much runs all of his compression dials wide open. He likes a soft feel, but also, his suspension kinematics is quite progressive, which means that he can run a slightly softer uh, fork and rear and get away with it. He can just have that small bump sensitivity without blowing through his travel. So there is a lot to play in there and you really got to understand how they all work together in order to take this trend on board, I think. That's why those guys have experts that tell them how to interpret the data. But I wonder if something like flight attendant might come through into the downhill world. I wonder if maybe that's what Olins and Loic Bruni are playing with underneath that shroud on the specialized demo. Who knows? Let me know down in the comments below if you are a downhiller, would you run uh, a flight attendant that automatically chooses all of your dials and settings for you as you're running down a track? So the vast majority of the World Cup field are using clipless or clip-in pedals. And this may not be a surprise to anyone who is racing downhill right now, but I feel like I come to trail centers like this and the vast majority of people are on flat pedals. And I still think that flat pedals are synonymous with that gravity free ride uh, type of riding anyway. So why are World Cup downhillers on clipless? Well, I think there's some security to be in there and some safety because these guys are hitting rough tracks flat out. And I think if they slipped a pedal at that speed, they would be in a world of hurt. So it's a little bit of security and safety, but also flat pedals require a bit of hanging on. So for the racers, if they can save a bit of strength and energy uh, by switching to clipless, then that energy could be used elsewhere. Elsewhere. However, it may not be for everyone. Not all people like it. Neil and Blake still run flats on their downhill bikes. Uh, even when Neil's racing, he's in flats. And you know what? Blake likes to trick, so obviously he's going to be in flats. So if you're more about style and fun rather than speed, then maybe you might want flats. And finally, I guess there's a big trend for aluminium wheels. Uh, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, but Carbon is starting to make a little bit of a comeback. Certainly Angel Suarez is on some Envy rims at the moment and seems to be getting on with them. Uh, but I think that's probably a future trend. Um, also, I did look at brakes and rotor sizes. Not much of a trend going on there. There's a real mix of sizes still. People like Rachel Atherton on double 200s, Angel Suarez having 220 just at the front, uh, and then Joe Breeden on double 220s. So a um, bit of a mix there. But one of the trends that I think we're gonna see a lot more of over the coming years is adjustable bikes, well, fully adjustable downhill bikes. We're already seeing head headset cups, adjusting head angles and reaches. And obviously there's flip chips in linkages and even in chain stays now. And I think this is a great thing for World Cup riders to fine tune their bikes to different courses. But I think it's a great thing for normal riders like you and I to fine tune these very specific machines to our type of terrain that we prefer to ride, but also our style. Uh, and I wanna see more of that in post 
post-production bikes. But anyway, have you been watching the Downhill World Cups? Have you seen any trends yourself? Let me know down in the comments below. And also let me know if there's been any trends that I've mentioned in this video that you might take on board. Let me know down in the comments below.